Hi, I'm Richard Barone, and we're here in the Gibson Guitar Showroom in New York City. It's one of my favorite rooms to be in, and I'm showing you one of my favorite guitars first, which is the, this particular TV Yellow Gibson Les Paul Special, which was my inauguration, really, into total Gibsondom. I was a Rickenbacker man before, and when I was in the bongos, um, played a variety of 16 Rickenbackers, often many of them on the road with me while I toured, um, but made a big switch to Gibson in 1994, and have had a great relationship with them ever since. But this guitar was my first one. I love the P90s. I love the sound of the P90s, and also the way that it reacts to the effects I use, especially the Ebo. And I love the TV yellow finish. Of course, you, I'm sure you know that the TV yellow color was developed by Gibson um, to photograph well on black and white television when guys would wear tuxedos, and when they wore a white guitar, it strobed. So they had to come up with a color that was muted enough so that it would appear white on black and white television, but not strobe. And this was the TV yellow color they came up with, which, as I understand it, is, is created not by any kind of dye, but by dipping the mahogany wood in lime, mineral, until it turns yellow. And that creates, to me, I don't know, this super solid rock effect on the guitar that makes the mahogany even harder. And that's why I, I really like this color for that reason, and also it looks kind of cool for me because I wear black. <laughs> and um, it's become my it's my favorite go-to guitar for almost any session, you know. And it's just like classic sound. Very basic. It can be as twangy as you want it to be, or as you know, fuzzy and dirty as you want it to be. And I just love this guitar. So I want to show you this first today. And I'm really happy to be here with Music Radar in this room, in this, in this room, and I'm, share, I'm really happy to share these instruments with you. But this is the first. This is my Gibson Les Paul Special 1994 from the Custom Shop, before it was called the Custom Shop. So this baby is the Epiphone Swingster, which I just discovered this year when we were making the 25th anniversary concert album of my 1987 album, Cool Blue Halo, on which I played a Guild X500. Um, which, the Guild X500 was a much fatter guitar, but had some of the attributes of this, you know, of this model. Um, since I only play Gibsons now, or Epiphone, uh, I wanted to find the equivalent, and I stumbled upon this one day here at the showroom, and it's a really beautiful swingster in uh, translucent black which I love because it is black, but it's not saturated black. You can sort of see the wood grain through the finish, and it's really beautiful. You can see on the back, especially. Um, they did a great job with this. This is also from the custom shop. And I fell in love with the instrument here in rehearsal. I rehearse here at Gibson. And when we were putting the album together, the live, the concert album, I just played this on every single song. <laughs> it, just, it just sounds so good on this record, it's, and it's two CDs. But, um, you know, I love the... Bigsby. It seems to stay in tune no matter what I do. And I mentioned in the concert, it was edited from the final concert film, but I didn't have to tune up once in the entire concert. It's a 90-minute concert. So I think it's a pretty solid rock, you know. But I love the pickups also, which are called swing buckers. And, you know, I love, I love those kind of trade names for things, but the swing buckers. Um, I don't I'm sure there's some specific wiring thing, which I don't understand, but they sound so clear. And on this album, I just went through a music man, a small music man amp from the 80s that I like. And for every song, it was like the appropriate sound. I kind of like, you can't ask for more from a guitar than having the appropriate sound for every song from the same instrument, you know. And this one did that. So I'm really thrilled with this Swingster. And it's going to become, I know it's going to become one of my favorites in my arsenal. <laughs> So this guitar is my go-to acoustic guitar nowadays. Um, I, for years I was intrigued by looking at photos of the Beatles in the recording studio in 1962 and 63 playing two of these J160E Gibsons. Um, both John and George played them on the early records and it took me a while to realize that they're not really playing electric guitars on some of those early records, they're both playing acoustics through an amp and the sound, the key to the sound is it's an acoustic with a different composite top 
It's different. It's not the typical acoustic guitar. It has a couple things different. One is that the wood is a composite. It's like very solid and doesn't reverberate like a normal acoustic. Secondly, behind this, instead of having the usual, um, I guess, triangular binding, whatever it is behind the you know front of the guitar, it has a ladder effect. Has a the 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 braces are in this direction. It just changes the way the guitar reverberates, which is hardly at all. And because of that, they're able to, they were able to play in large venues, cranked up really loud with this P90 pickup, which is a really like Les Paul pickup, you know. And it wouldn't feed back, basically. And the, an example, though, of when it did feed back is the beginning of the song I Feel Fine, when you hear that growling feedback, which was, I think, for a hit record, probably the first time you'd hear, you heard feedback on a record. On a hit, on a pop record, let's say, because I know maybe some blues records might have had some feedback, uh, but that was one of these J160Es placed against the amp, and it feeds back, and that became the intro to that song. Um, it's a beautiful sounding guitar and extremely tight. Like it doesn't have that kind of woofy, acoustic, folky sound. It has a, a rock sound. It's great for pop music, and I've been for the last two years. I've just made this my exclusive, you know, like the, uh, you know acoustic guitar that I use on stage, especially on stage. In the studio I might have a couple of different acoustics, but on stage it's just been this. I love the knobs. I love that I can control it like while I play and not some weird, you know, often acoustic has, you know, knobs in funny places. It's just right here like an electric. And it's just, it's very balanced and beautifully made. And this is the John Lennon model, as you can see, and, um, uh, but it's based on the 1962, I believe 62, Gibson J160E. Um, I my other favorite version of this is the Sunburst. The story of the, you know, plain finish, whatever, natural finish, is that John Lennon uh, sanded his down during around the era he did Give Peace a Chance. He sanded down the finish of the Sunburst because he wanted a white guitar. He used the same guitar, by the way, for the entire Beatles era all through the 60s until and beyond 1970. It's the same, same exact guitar. He just sanded it down. So when you see pictures of him in 1963 with it, it's a sunburst. And then in, during the Give Piece a Chance era, it's natural. But these are special, beautiful guitars. I'm so happy that Gibson is manufacturing them again. You know, they, they, don't, they come around every few years. They're not always being made. But when they are, it's worth picking one up because they are just beautiful acoustics. And they sound so good through an amplifier. <laughs> In the mid-2000s, I was reading Wired magazine and read that Gibson Guitars was developing a digital Les Paul. Now, since I was already in love with my Les Paul special, but always looking for new guitar sounds, I was very intrigued and called them here in this building and asked if I could come see um, what they were working on. And it was this guitar, which is, they ended up calling it an HD, high definition Les Paul. And it has a hex pickup which is digital and allows you to put each string in the recording studio in its own channel and its own discrete channel so on my last album my previous album glow came out in, in 2010 i used it i was a skywalker sound and they have a five point they have a seven point one actually uh, system there so i was able to record each string on its own track double it and have this really nice surround sound with the guitar um which is something i've been looking for pretty much always because as a singer when you mix a guitar and a voice together, there's often a competition of the two sounds. They're at a similar frequency. And with this instrument, I'm able to kind of wrap around, the guitar can wrap around the voice instead of fighting it in the same centerpiece. So in venues like Carnegie Hall, where I played a concert with only this guitar, um, and on my previous album, I'm able to do surround sound effects that you really can't do with any other instrument, you know? So this was the first of the technology guitars that Gibson came up with. And I call it the Les Paul Digital. I got to have a nice argument with Les Paul when he was alive about it. They were developing it, and he was asking me why I wanted a digital. And I explained, just as I did to you just now, about that. And he, it was just great, because I think he was actually teasing me. Like, he knew why I would want it, and why anybody would want to have the digital technology. But he was like, why isn't the old one good enough? You know, and I was explaining, and he really got it out of me, just the way I just told you. But it gives you all those options. And um, I think that one of the most exciting things about Gibson to me is that they do have their classic instruments, like the ones I just showed you. And they're great, and they're fun, and I love having vintage instruments. But they also look to the future. I mean, that's kind of cool for me because that's how I do it. That's how I am with my music. I mean, I want it to be classic, 
<laughs> as much as I can, but I also want to, to be modern, you know. And they do that with the instruments. And this is this was the first example of that to me. And I really love this the Les Paul Digital. I play it a lot. When I do recording sessions, I often have this with me, just so I can do that splitting of the strings, and it's really beautiful. But the most recent of the technology guitars is the Firebird X, which I am the poster boy for in the New York area, anyway, if not nationally. Um, and this one has more. It has it has a digital technology. It, the pickup there is a digital pickup, um, and it's based on the same one. It's a more refined now version, but it also has you know the amazing tuning system, which at first I was a little hesitant to, to love, but I, now I really love because on stage, on stage, you know, when I'm out of tune, which happens sometimes with some guitars, this one, of course, you tune instantly. It's perfect, tunes it really well, so between songs, I can tell a story, and the guitar can tune itself, and the audience does not hear me going, you know, trying to find the note. It's really great for that. But there's also in the sound banks, 55, I think, different sounds. And they're all very unique. You know, here's a little, it's like, it's a really good, and these are all, you can fine tune all of them. Like on the, this one, for instance, the tremolo, you can adjust the timing of it, the depth of it. Everything is sort of, you know, uh, this is great because it goes backwards. You know, there's, there's also some great acoustic, there's acoustic sounds, there's heavy metal sounds. It really runs the, <laughs> runs the gamut. So this has been a, a really favorite from a, of mine now for when I do shows where, for instance, if I tribute to John Lennon last year, you know, it's like a million artists coming on and doing a John Lennon song, and I came on and I did a, a song, and I was able to get very close to hit the sound of his original recording from this instrument, uh, instantly, without pedals, without any effects. And I think that's, you know, something that you need sometimes, a guitar that doesn't require a lot of stuff. Like, this, is, this has everything built in, from the tuner to the effects. You know, it's, it's a really good instrument. At first, I was concerned about the shape of it, because it's a little bit... Uh, modern for me or postmodern but you know it's based on the original firebird of the 60s it's just a smaller version of it and i think they got it just right you know so this is one of my favorite guitars now these are humbuckers digital pickup and a a gear shift that gives you 55 different sounds i mean you can't ask for much more in an instrument this has been a favorite of mine lately it's the combination of having the classic instruments like the swingster and the les paul special and the john lennon J160E, and then being able to have something really new, that's kind of what I like. I like that combination.